There you go. So today I'm going to be talking about um, pretty much Linux versus Windows, uh, in a sense, basically to a lower end laptops. So what I did, um, I was doing this little test, this came to mind. Um, what if I installed Linux on a lower end laptop? And by lower end, I mean something running under an i3 processor, something around two to four hundred dollars. Uh, so I have this uh, Lenovo 211 2 in 1. Uh, they were selling them at Best Buy, I believe, uh, around $400. And so I wanted to try, okay, which one's going to be faster and which one's going to be better overall, uh, Windows or Linux. Now, keep in mind, this isn't for any editing. This isn't for any gaming. This is basically just browsing and checking emails and doing all that, which is what someone buying this laptop would do. So schoolwork, all that. So first off, um, installing Ubuntu is actually really easy. Um, the reason why I went with Ubuntu is I've used it before and I really like the distribution, how it looks. It has a very... Getting it off the website, really easy to do. Uh, you can just go and Google Ubuntu and it'll bring you to their uh, website. You can donate to them if you want to, to uh, further the development and all that jazz. And they explain it more on the website. So um, I went to do that, uh, downloaded the, um, what was it called? I downloaded the, um, the uh, USB maker. I'm yeah, so it's called the US. It's um, a USB maker. Basically, it allows you to take the USB file or the um, ISO file and put it onto a bootable USB. So it's pretty easy, pretty straightforward to use. So then I did that. Um, then I just restarted it. And with um, Lenovo, I really liked what they did with this. So normally for BIOS options, you have to push a combination of F2, F12, F9, etc. Uh, with what Linux has, or sorry, what Lenovo has done, too many L's in this, what Lenovo has done is they made it really easy with a button on the side that you press and hold for four seconds instead of the power button that boots it directly into the BIOS. And then it gives you options of safe booting, um, changing the boot device, doing all that stuff. So it gives you a bunch of options as well as messing around with the BIOS. So I did that. Um, for these Windows 10 laptops, you do have to disable secure boot. Same thing with Windows 8 and 8.1. Uh, I didn't I forgot about doing that the first time, so I was wondering uh, when I kept trying to boot it, it wasn't working. So I go ahead and I did that and, um, and disabled fast boot also because I wanted to dual boot my laptop. Uh, that's also another option. So I dual booted the laptop and everything went fine and I didn't have a problem with it. Installing my programs, didn't really have a problem and everything went a lot better. I've been using Linux for the past few days. Aspect. So I did um, well one test mainly uh, to boot. Um, boot speeds pretty much. So how fast from when you turn on the power button to how fast you can actually start using the computer. And I was actually surprised by this because Windows did it in 25 seconds, full boot um, to the lock screen. So not full boot, but to the lock screen, not to the desktop. Um, then same thing with Linux. Linux, I booted it up, but I got it in 40 seconds. It was around 42 seconds from the each time I tried it. Uh, and I was actually kind of surprised by this because I installed Linux before on um, my HP Envy and it booted up at least two times faster than what Windows was. Now that was Windows 8.1, so there is that. So it was a surprise thing. Now uh, keep in mind that so my computer is running an Intel Pentium uh, N3520 2.1 gigahertz processor that can turbo boost up to 2.4 gigahertz. It's a quad core processor with two megabytes of memory. Uh, it, can, it is a 64 bit processor, so you can run 64 bit applications on it. It's running two, four gigabytes of DDR3 RAM at 1330 megahertz. It has a 500 gigabyte 5400 RPM solid hard drive, not solid state drive. Then it is a two in one though, so you can uh, fold it in half and work on it as a tablet, which I do like. I do like using that mode. So, really, just uh, wrapping up here, is it worth putting Linux on a lower end laptop? And my answer is yes. I think it is worth it. Um, at least dual booting it because you get the best of both worlds there. If you're just using it for browsing, web documents, uh, internet, and I said that three times, <laughs> document editing and emails and everything, I say go for it. It's really easy to do. It's not, I really actually do recommend, if, if not just totally getting away with Windows, just installing Linux as a dual boot, as a backup option if you don't want to boot into uh, Windows. And if you want, you can just turn off the computer, switch back to Windows. Um, problem solved. And if you need to pull documents off, you can pull documents off your Windows partition to Linux, because Linux can read that. So I definitely recommend it. So anyways, guys, thanks for watching. Uh, be sure to comment on the video, like the video, and if you want to see more videos like this, go ahead and subscribe. I am out of here, and y'all have a nice day.